Shout a thunderous hallelujah. Shout, it is my turn to be lifted and transformed, hallelujah. Shout, my heaven shall open, hallelujah. Our Lord is God. Brethren in the Lord, once again on behalf of the Godhead, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we want to specially welcome you to tonight's edition of Hour of Glory. What a wonderful week it has been. God has been so good. God has been so awesome. God has been so marvelous. And I want to believe God has been doing the great and mighty wonders concerning each and everyone's life too, in Jesus' name. Our God is called. Tonight is another blessed opportunity in God's presence. We pray the good Lord will manifest his wonders in this broadcast space tonight, in the life of as many as we connect to this broadcast in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, let us pray. Father in the Lord, we thank you. Our Father, our God, we give you praise. Our King of glory, we worship you. The great physician, we thank you. The merciful Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you for all your faithfulness concerning us as your children. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for blessing us so much, for protecting us so much, for quickening us so much, for showing us so much mercies. Father, we give you all the praise. Accept our thanksgiving forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Daddy, we commit our, our meeting tonight into your hand. Come and take total charge. Come and drive this meeting tonight. Come and pilot this meeting tonight. Come and coordinate this meeting tonight. Lord, let as many as we connect to this stage tonight, let them receive your divine transformation. Let them receive your divine quickening. Let them receive your divine blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover tonight's edition in the pool of the blood of Jesus. We saturate this environment in the blood of Jesus. We declare this area a no operating zone for powers of darkness and evil in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, arise, Lord, to glorify your name and power. Thank you, most wonderful Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Once again, brethren, we want to specially welcome you to tonight's edition of Hour of Glory. Of course, as we always tell us, Hour of Glory is an Holy Ghost inspired program meant to cause divine transformation in the life of men, even in this end of times. I pray that your experience tonight will be that that will be so awesome that all the days of your life you will bless the great God Jehovah. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, we are going to be looking at something very germane and that has to do more with our relationship with our maker. Amen. We are going to be looking at the danger of unconfessed sin. The dangers of unconfessed sin. Beloved, forgiveness and forgiveness and salvation and all its associated processes have their process. Amen. God has instituted a process for anyone to get salvation. Such first and foremost must be forgiven of his sins. Praise the name of the Lord. Because in our world today, it's beginning to look as if, oh, there's no reason why you should even confess sins. Amen. And the reason why many are thinking it that way is because many have lost touch with what the Bible is saying. Beloved, there's danger when a man, a woman, believer, continue to manifest, continue to live in deluge of unconfessed sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Of course, we all know what the consequences of sin portends. Amen. Everyone that sins surely deserves death. Oh yes, that's the truth of the matter. Amen. Any sin, any soul that sins is qualified for death. 
But thank God for his mercies in this end time. Thank God for showing us so much. Thank God for, for how he has shown us so much love and kindness. We should also thank him for bringing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He brought Jesus. He sacrificed him. He surrendered him so that I and you might be saved and delivered. Praise the name of the Lord. Of course, we know that the meaning of sin is a missing mark. A missing mark in our relationship with God. Sin means disorderly conduct, as it has to do with God's own divine ordinances. Praise the name of the Lord. None of us can perfectly meet his intention and desires, because sins gets in the way at all times. But when we believe in Jesus, our sin is atoned. And God now views us as righteousness. Because the righteousness of Christ Jesus is imputed into us. Praise the name of the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse, 12, 5 verse 21. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. The Bible admonishes us that there is danger in unconfessed sin. There is what? Danger in, unco in unconfessed sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Even the psalmist in Psalms 22 verse 3 also amplified that position. And what did that place talk about sin? What did he talk about sin? He said, when I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. That is the mistake many of us are making into this world. Praise the name of the Lord. We think we can continue to live in deluge of sins, deluge of unconfessed sins. As this program progresses, we are going to be seeing a lot of benefits that confessing our sins will bring to the table of our blessings. I pray the good Lord will mightily bless us all richly in Jesus' name. But quickly, before we go ahead, let's give honor to whom honor is due. Let's worship him in his majesty. For there is none like this God. He's a wonderful father. He's the king of glory. He's the Lord of lords. Is the ancient of days, is the mighty man in battle. What a mighty God we serve. 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 Oh yes, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. And we will say that you are good for all the miracles you've done that's brought us joy. And we shall sing what we glory are, blessing to us. Oh yeah, Father, we declare, oh Father, Oh yes, that we, oh yes, we declare forever. I say, Father, we declare, Father, hallelujah, that we love. Oh yes, we declare our everlasting love for you. Oh yes, Jehovah, Jehovah, you are the most high God. Open your mouth, let us worship the Lord together. I say Jehovah, oh Jehovah, ah, Obaton Shil. Tani kauli she baba o, boni Jesus ton she un tani kauli she alaru o, o luwa o luwa o luwa o rukare tini 
Oh yes, Nigbo, Bo Aye, Oruko. I say, Jesus, don't show Tani Kauli she Oloro. Obangi di show Tani Kauli she Baba Mimo. Oluwa, 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 Kabi Esi. Oba oba ni ni bo bo aye orukore. Let's open our mouth once again tonight. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's thank Him for this night because to as many as will be part and parcel of this program tonight is going to be our night of divine trans transfiguration. Let's worship Him. Let's thank Him. Let's exalt Him. Let's reverence Him because our God is a good God. Father, we thank you for showing us so much kindness, for showing us so much mercies. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's quickly humble ourselves before him and say, Lord, please have mercy upon us. Lord, forgive us our trespasses. Any sin we have sinned against you, whether the one we have confessed or unconfessed, Lord, please show us mercies tonight. Have mercy upon us. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to be praying these few other prayers right now. Please, I want you to put on your prayer garment and we we'll pray in this direction. Amen. You pray. Say, according to first, according to Matthew 24, verse 10, 35. For it is written that heavens and earth shall pass away, but your words in my heart shall not pass away. It shall stay to bring greater results for me. As I have prayed, as I have desired tonight, so shall I have all my desires in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, as I have desires tonight, I shall have all my desires in the mighty name of Jesus. I shall, as, I have desire, as I am desiring tonight, I shall get all my good quality desires in the mighty name of Jesus. I shall obtain your mercy, I shall obtain your forgiveness, your healing, your deliverance, your transformation. And everything, Lord, oh God, that forgiveness brings to the table of our blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to still pray for yourself. Say any sin anywhere. Say any secret sin anywhere. Harboring. Say every, every secret sin anywhere. Every secret sin I'm harboring in any area of my life. That is becoming an impediment to my blessings. I decree, let them be cleared away tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Every secret change in any area of my life, in any area of our lives, oh yes, that have become an impediment to our blessings. Let them be cleared away. Let them be cleared away. Let the blood of Jesus come to our rescue. Blood of Jesus, come to our rescue. Come to our rescue. Come to our rescue. Come to our rescue. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. There are no other things since brings that disappointment. Since we always bring disappointment. I want us to pray. Say at the bus stop of disappointment. Say mercy of God. Bail me out tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. At the bus stop of disappointment. Let the mercy of God bail me out. Bail me out. Let the mercy of God bail out your people tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of God bail out your people tonight. Let it bail out your boot 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 tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Say, as the Lord liveth and his spirit is alive, every power of sin assigned to waste my life or destiny. You are a liar. Be destroyed by the power in the blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every power of sin assigned to waste my life, waste my potential, waste my glory. You are a liar. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Let the blood of Jesus neutralize you now. The blood that speaks better than the blood of Abel. Let them let, let it neutralize you. Let the blood neutralize you. Let the blood neutralize you. Let the blood neutralize you. In Jesus' name we pray. See, every throne of sin in any area of my life. I dethrone you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Every, every throne of sin in any area of my life, I dethrone you tonight. I detone you tonight. Every tone of sin in the life of your people tonight. I detone them tonight. We detone them tonight. We detone them tonight. 
we detone them tonight in Jesus mighty name pray see wherever my glory have been stolen because of my dwelling in sin oh Lord by your mercy recover back my glory for me tonight in the mighty name of Jesus wherever our glory have been stolen because of entrenchment in sinful activities oh Lord our God recover back by your mercy recover back recover back recover back recover back recover back recover back Lord our glory recover back our glory in Jesus mighty name we pray every signboard of ink covered upon the life of anyone hearing us tonight every every signboard of ink covered in my life in the life of anyone let them be clear the way tonight let them be clear the way tonight yes let them be clear the way tonight let those kind of let those signboard be replaced that the glory of the Lord has been restored 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 in Jesus mighty name we pray beloved sin is dangerous sin is terrible it is cantacorous sin can destroy anything it's like a canker worm it can pull down a person's glory but when forgiveness come that glory which departed can re restore back again as it happened in the in the life of the israelites i pray tonight that god sh will show us mercies the bible says he sent his word and his word he let his people i pray every word that will be spoken in this space tonight shall heal everyone hearing us in the name of jesus beloved as we are saying we are looking at the, we are looking tonight at the danger of unconfessed sin the danger of unconfessed sin of course when it comes to sin all are sinned and come short of his glory all without exemption all irrespective of your title irrespective of your class irrespective of your academic your educational level irrespective of the family background you come from whether you, you are an european you are an african you are an asian wherever you come from as long as you are tied to that lineage of Adam, of course, all are sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible made confession as a precondition to receiving forgiveness from the Almighty. Praise the name of the Lord. In John 1 verse 9, John 1 verse 9, the Bible made it clear, it said, if we confess our sins, our God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our God, you see, if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. This verse is written to Christians and hangs on the word. If it's a conditional word. If we confess, if he didn't say he would just do it, he said, If we confess, unfortunately, many have not been able to receive their complete forgiveness, they have not been able to get full restoration from where sin has put in them because they have not done the needful, which is to confess their sins. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, when you confess your sin, you shame that sin. You shame the devil. And it brings into your life some kind of energy and strength to move ahead and on. Praise the Lord. The reason why many today are living double-faced life, hypocritical living, is because of many unconfessed sins. All they are interested in is they, they started fulfilling the 11th commandment. You know, the commandment God gave Moses was 10. But the one they are fulfilling is the 11th one. Somebody will ask, what is that 11th commandment? That 11th commandment simply says, Thou shall not be found. Thou shall not be found. Which means, they continue to dwell in that sin and they will hide it. Dwelling in all manner of secret sins. Now, when they are unconfessed, they remain secret sins. And when those secret sins are there, they are capable of of doing every kind of damage they can they can turn a, the glory of a man upside down they can destroy a destiny they can give the enemy a loophole to enter any life 
I pray tonight the Almighty God will deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, as soon as we have taken Jesus, as soon as we receive him as our Lord and Savior, instantly something begins to happen. And one who has already been condemned suddenly begins to receive divine grace of restoration, of lifting, of transformation, of sanctification, of deliverance. I pray that the Lord, I pray that's exactly what the Almighty God shall do in our life tonight in the name of Jesus. Beloved, unconfessed sin is like cankerworm. They are so destructive. They are so destructive. They are so destructive that they rob us of every blessing God has prepared for us. And they continue to manifest and establish the kingdom of the enemy concerning our individual lives. As long as those unconfessed sins are there, and they are piling up, piling up, ah, it's very doubtful if such person will ever make heaven. I pray the good Lord will deliver us tonight in Jesus' name. But when you confess your sin, and you, t and you say it openly, oh yes, I used to be a fornicator, but God has shown me mercy. I am no longer in that line. Oh, yes, I used to be a thief. I stole this, I stole that, I stole this. As soon as you confess it openly, I tell you the truth, the enemy will hide themselves. If you have not dealt with unconfessed sin in your life, the enemy will continue to hide under you. And the principle the enemy uses is just simply this. He will say, ah, don't tell people, don't let people know. Ah, it will spoil your reputation. Don't tell people. Ah, just, just remain as you are. All the plans of the enemy and that agenda is to make sure he rubbish whatever grace God has planned and programmed concerning your life. I pray the good Lord will deliver us tonight in Jesus' name. Is there danger in unconfessed sins? Yes. The answer is capital yes. The answer is capital yes. The Bible may declare that we all have sinned and deserve death because of sin. Of course, we know the meaning of sin. Sin simply means it's missing the mark that God has set for us. Doing that which we ought not to be doing. Not walking according to God's own ordinances. Amen. Sin means making our own fleshly desire to superintend over everything that has to do with God. Amen. I pray God will deliver us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Even though Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who paid with his, with his life on the cross to atone for me and you, have done all that I needed for our salvation to be completed, for our salvation to be perfected. Nevertheless, because of our unconfessed sin, because we have refused to follow the dictates, the direction of God's word, Concerning confession, we are robbed of all our benefits. Many of us do not know that the salvation package Jesus delivered to us has so much inside it. It does not just entail us going to church, go and sing in church, pray in church, and come back home. No! It has to do with your health. It has a nexus with your finance. It has a connection with your blessings. It has a connection with your career. That salvation package as in as as a connection with how far you can go concerning life. Praise the Lord. I pray the good Lord will give us grace to understand tonight in Jesus' name. When Christians refuse to seek God in confession and repentance, they may experience a broken fellowship with God. Of course. Because what that does is that their fellowship with their maker is disrupted. The Lord will just be looking at them and say, what, what's wrong with this one? Because anyone living in any unconfessed sin has not changed. When the Bible says, oh, when a man is in Christ, a new creature, old things have passed away, and all things have become new. The man is still abhorring those old things. He has refused it to pass away. That's simply what it means. When you are dwelling in unconfessed sin, when you have deluge of unconfessed sin all around you, hanging everywhere, it is very, very dangerous. 
such a person will never be a friend of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will not dwell in any unholy environment, unholy place. And these are the areas we are defrauding ourselves as believers. Because that's why, according to history, there will never be a time that we have so much number of powerless believers as we have in this generation. This is one of the reasons why we continue to live a powerless Christian life. Christianity is not just a word. It is the demonstration of God's power. It is the demonstration of God's power. And for that power to be mightily established, it must be founded on holiness. It must be founded on holiness and founded on pleasing the Lord God at all times. Unconfessing is a barrier to pleasing God. And the earlier we realize this, the better for us. Praise the Lord. Because when you continue to dwell in that unconfessing, it's like one who is putting fire in his bosom. It will be eating you gradually. And before you know it, you are just a caricature of what you ought to be. I pray the Almighty God will deliver us tonight in the name of Jesus. God loves us so much. He appreciates us as his children. He also wants us to do the needful. Praise the Lord. Because you see, the forgiveness we earned from our Father, our God, was through the blood that was shed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why the Bible will declare, the book of Hebrew, says the blood that speaks about that in the blood of Abel. Because why the blood of Abel continue to speak vengeance, 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 crying the cry of vengeance. The blood of Jesus is always speaking mercy, 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 mercy. I pray that the Almighty God will show you mercy, show us mercies in the mighty name of Jesus. Unconfessed sins will always bring bondages. That's why today, despite all the avalanche of grace available in God's kingdom, the enemy keep continue to pipe pressure. The enemy continue to afflict the children of God as if they are not part and parcel of the kingdom. These are the reasons why these things are happening these days, beloved. When a man is dwelling in unconfessed sin, oh yes, he has not, that certainly means he has not relinquished that sin. Amen. You need to confess the sin and shame the enemy and move ahead and on in life. Oh, in recent times, we have seen education situations where husbands give their life to Christ. And they go to their wife and say, my wife, I have hurt you so much. A social time, a social time, a social time, I went out with social person, social person, and I slept with social person. I did this, I did that. Yes, it is painful. Oh, yes. But of course, if you want to live above that sin of always chasing shadows, of always cheating, of course, you need to confess those sins and tell God, Lord, the grace to prevail over this area of weakness bestow upon me. And surely God always do. God always show mercy. God always give that grace to continue in his word, in his fear, in his love. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray the good Lord will help us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's why the Bible made it very clear in 2 Chronicles 7.14. He said, my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. Now, listen. The principle is clear here. It requires two turns. You must turn from your wicked ways and turn back to God. Those are the two turns. Amen. He who have refused to confess his sins and harboring those sins and adding more, more sins upon sins, has not taken two turns. You need to turn away from that sin. And part of the way it, it will show that you have turned away is to confess it loud and say, use this sin, you have no effect over me any longer. Yes, I have overcome you. I have nothing to do with this kind of lifestyle again. It is bye-bye to you, to this lifestyle. I am now a born-again child of the Most High God. You need to confess it. You need to confess it. Don't just maintain a straight face like somebody who is so superhuman, and yet you are filled, everything about your system is filled with so many, many secret sins. I pray the good Lord will deliver us 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God delivered Jesus for our salvation, and after his resurrection, after everything God has done, God decided to adopt us as his child. Amen. We that used to be in darkness, he adopted us because he delivered us from darkness and established our feet in marvelous light. Amen. God has established his revival concerning our life. We that used to be spiritually dead. Because you see, the truth is to be carnally minded is death. But the spiritually minded is life and life more abundantly. Suddenly we became spiritually revived. We that used to dwell in terrible sins became people who has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have suddenly been incorporated into the body of the kingdom of God, the church of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We have suddenly received forgiveness for all our sins. Amen. God confirmed our position as his own heir. God confirmed our position as his friend. God established us as his own faithful, as his saints, even while we are still living. Those are the benefits, those are the transformations that took place when God did his works of salvation in our life. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, in the hierarchy of confession, I want us to get it very clear because we're still going to be looking at some other very vital uh, areas in this. In the hierarchy of confession, of course, it is confession unto God first. You don't have any duty confessing to anyone if you have not confessed unto God. You need to confess unto God first and let God take to that charge and say, Lord, I did this, I did it, I know. I know I messed up big time. I know I didn't do well. I know I've done what you didn't ask me to do. Lord, show me mercy. Have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus. I know by the reason of what I have done, I have hurt my wife. And I'm going to confess to her. And you say, oh, I know by the reason of what I've done, I have hurt my husband. And I'm going to confess to him. Praise the Lord. Don't maintain a big face because what we are simply doing is preparing ourselves for hell. Don't maintain a big face, a long face. You do, do your needful first. Confess to the Almighty God. Ask Him for grace and mercy. Begin to live that life that God wants you to live. Then ask Him to lead you as you make proper confession to those around you. Praise the name of the Lord. But also, too, this requires some wisdom. Be very mindful when you are doing this. And be very prayerful and spiritual, too. I pray the good Lord will give us grace to do the needful and to overcome every deluge of sin that is trying to pull our glory down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, confession is so important because... Sin delivers a blow, and that blow is like a verdict. That, that, that blow is like a verdict. Of course, we know what, hap what, 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 what happened in Romans 3.32. Because the verdict of heaven, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, is a verdict. The heaven has declared a verdict that everyone in this planet, in this plane, has sinned and come short of God's glory. It's another verdict in Psalms 130 verse 3. He said, the Lord should mark iniquity. If the Lord should mark iniquity, none of us will be able to stand. That's another verdict of the Most High God. That is, if God should rate us by our conscious righteousness, by our conscious piety level, how many will be able to even raise their head? Praise the name of the Lord. It's another verdict in Proverbs 11, 21. He said, though hand join in hands, the wicked shall not be unpunished. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The wicked shall not go unpunished. Because the wicked is always dwelling in his sin. 
is not ready to give up those evil and sin. But the Bible says the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. That's another verdict of heaven. Another verdict of heaven is in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. He said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. What is remaining if you cannot inherit God's kingdom? What is remaining if all that you are doing is to prepare yourself for hell? May the Almighty God deliver us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the package of salvation is not complete until you have been saved from this evil world and you have been established in God's marvelous kingdom, dwelling in His light, in His bosom, in His presence, in His mansion forever. Praise the name of the Lord. Of course, we, we all know the genesis of sin, that we all inherited sin from Adam. Amen. Sin also is a fruit of the flesh. You know what we're talking about? To sin is to depart from God. You know, the one, the, another terrible thing, thing with sin is this. It is the flesh and the body that sins. But that which we suffer the consequence is the soul and the spirit. What did the Bible say? It said, the soul that sinneth shall die. Amen. Man is made of... The man is a tripartite being. Man, man consists of the body, which is this packaging we carry about. Man consists, man, yes, of three. Uh, th this body we carry about. Man has a soul. And also man has a spirit. Unfortunately, it is body that lost people to sin. But when the interest when the consequences of sin will arise it is not the body that will suffer it any longer but the soul and the spirit praise the name of the lord what are we talking about this body is not going anywhere even if rapture takes place today automatically there shall be an instant instant kind of exchange of body bodily system amen we will jettison this particular body and God will give us a body that is immortal. Or if a person dies, as soon as the person dies, this body goes down. The Bible says dust to dust. But the soul and the spirit goes back to God and awaits divine judgment or divine uh, uh, divine direct divine um, decision of the Most High God. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why, on the judgment day, it is the soul and the, it is the soul and the spirit. Because it's God holds that spirit, it will return back to God. It's that soul, more importantly, that will be judged. Because in the end and the last time, according to the study of eschatology, man will be given a permanent body. That is, a, 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 a body that is permanent, what I mean here is when the person has been judged and is destined for heaven, of course he will appear in the bodily form. But that body is the immortal body, not this one we, are, we carry about. Certainly if, if rapture should come today, we shall jettison this one and go. Or if some people's rapture comes through, through death, maybe they die because when the person dies, automatically the rapture has come. He will have to give away this body and he will ascend to go and face his maker. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I pray, I pray God give us understanding in Jesus' name. So, ordinarily, we are supposed to be children of God, children of the Most High God. But what sin does is to totally disinherit us of all our rights before our maker, our God. Praise the name of the Lord. Sin also hinders prayers. Sin, what did I say? In those prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. In First John 1 verse 9, 1 John 1 verse 9, 
He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The number one condition is we must confess that sins for us to receive forgiveness and also for us to be cleansed. Praise the name of the Lord. Sin is dangerous. It's a fire you cannot put under your bosom. It will destroy beyond measure. Expose it. Confess it. Don't cover it up. And that's how we can receive divine grace to overcome it. Because as long as we are in this plane, we shall always experience the temptation of sin. Oh yes. We shall always experience it. We shall always struggle with it. We shall, but God has made us already overcomer. Surely we will overcome. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's according to the promise of the Most High God. So don't cover your sin. Rather confess it. In Psalms 32 verse 3. The psalmist went, said very clearly. He said, when I kept silence, my boast was old to my rolling all the day long. Because sin will destroy a person from the inside. May God save and deliver us tonight. And as many as I see are burying their sins in their bosom, hiding them 24-7 in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, there's a lot of blessings when we confess our sins. What did I say? There is a lot of blessings when we confess our sins. The book of Psalms 32, verse 1 and 2, made it abundantly clear. Is it blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven? Blessed is he whose sin is covered. When we confess that sin, automatically we are no longer the one covering it. But God himself will cover it. And he will put unto us righteousness. No one will even remember again that, ah, don't be this terrible adulterer they go so. No. They will look at you as a child of the Most High God. And that was why, despite all the atrocities, Paul the Apostle committed before he surrendered to Christ. No one is talking about it. He was the greatest persecutor of the church that ever lived. He killed so many Christians. He was responsible for the destruction of so many Christian populations. But suddenly, as soon as he gave his life to Christ, and the Almighty God began to use him, all the record of all those terrible records of all the evil he has done was was totally cleared away. Praise the Lord. No many even till now, if not for uh, the, the, the the books we read or, 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 or the Bible we read, many tomorrow what we call him Paul the apostles. They won't say Paul the persecutor of the church because he has made it known, confessed it. And God has created him a new personality who was ready to die for his maker. I pray the grace to live above sin and to be overcome over sin. The Lord will bestow upon us in the name of Jesus. What is the power in confession of sins? What is that power? Beloved, in case you do not know, maybe that sickness is that is in your bosom. That trouble you are passing through and struggling with day in and day out. You are praying, is as if your prayers are not being answered. It may be as a result of someone confessing. Now let's look at what the Bible says. Confession of sin bringeth forth healing. Confession of sin bringeth forth healing. No matter how terrible the sin may look. Even if you have killed the whole Christian community like Paul. According to James 5 verse 16. James 5 verse 16. He said, confess your fault one to another and pray one for another that he may be healed. If you don't confess those sins, healing may not come concerning that particular situation you are passing through. He said, confess your fault one to another, James 5 verse 16, and pray one for another that he may be healed. He now went on further to say, they have effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Praise the name of the Lord. We are looking at the power of confession of sin. Now listen to another one. Confession of sin results in forgiveness from the Almighty. 
what did I say? Confession of your sin results in instant forgiveness from the Almighty. In 1 John 1 verse 9, 1 John 1 verse 9, he said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He himself will cleanse us, not we cleansing ourselves. We can't do it on our own. Praise the name of the Lord. Confession also to remove that yoke that is in sin, that destructive yoke. When you confess your sin, it unburdens you from the yoke of sin, which could be very devastating. Confession of your sin unburdens you from every yoke of sin, which could be very devastating to your well-being. What did the Bible say? In Galatians 6 verse 2, Galatians 6 verse 2, it said, Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. When we confess, a lot of things come to play. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in James 5, 13 to 16, He says, any, any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing. When you confess, I tell you, not only will you receive forgiveness, but instant healing will come your way. Praise the Lord. When you confess your sin, oh yes, divine strength from the inside begin to manifest that will push out every unrighteousness concerning your life. Beloved, it's not to him that will it or him that run it, but the Almighty God has showed mercy. If you want the Almighty God to dwell in you, richly, richly, I tell you, you must confess all those hidden secret sins you are harboring because they are destroying you from the inside. They are responsible for the reason why your glory has not manifested. Oh yes, every man has a glory and has a crown. I'm saying it and I say it again. The Bible made it clear. In the book of Psalms 8, He said, O Lord, thy excellence is thy name. Yes. He said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is son of man that thou visitest him? In verse 3 of it. What is man that thou visitest him? He said, You made him lower than the angel, yet you crowned him with glory and honor. Every man, every woman has a crown of glory. Every woman, man has a crown of honor. And the enemy has dispossessed many of their own crown because of the ignorance of sin they are living in. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Beloved, what other things does confession do? Confession relieves condemnation. It relieves us of condemnation. Just watch it. As soon as maybe all the sins you have sinned and you have confessed them, you become free. Your body becomes free. Your system becomes free. Becomes very free and light, lightened. But as long as you carry those sins, oh my God. May God deliver us in Jesus' name. So confession releases us of every condemnation. According to Romans 8, take your time and read it, 1 to 39. He said, There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Confession also elicits comfort from God. It elicits comfort from God and even from men on the consequences of sin. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, 1 Thessalonians 5.11, He said, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Praise the Lord. When they know that you are a child of God, men will comfort you, God will comfort you. Situation around you will comfort you. And your life surely can never remain the same. Praise the name of the Lord. Also according to 1 John 1 verse 7. 1 John 1 verse 7. He said, but if ye walk in light as he is light. If we walk in light as he is light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus is son. Cleanse is us from all sins. 1 John 1 verse 7. If we walk in light as it is light, we have fellowship one with another, 
and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. I pray that shall be your portion, my portion, our portion, in the name of Jesus. Confession also elicits forgiveness. No matter how grievous the sin may look. Remember his promises in Isaiah 1. If you read it from verse um, Isaiah 1 from verse 17. Is even if your sins are as red as crimson, the Lord shall make it white as snow. Even if your sins say, come, let us reason together. Even if your sins are as terrible as anything, God I can turn you from a sinner to become a saint. Praise the Lord. Irrespective of the kind of sin you have sinned. That is the beauty of this our God and the salvation he has prepared and provided for mankind. That's the beauty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, confession and receipt, forgiveness, no matter how grievous the sin may look, in Ephesians 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, verse 32. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. And be ye kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, what are we saying tonight, beloved? The long and short of what we are saying, because we are still going to be entering our hour of, glo hour of glory, hour of the strategic right now. What are we saying here tonight? According to Hebrews 3.13, but exhort one another daily, why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is very deceitful. You're going to tell you, oh, just keep it. No, no, no. Don't, don't make people see it. Just going to do it under your cover. Begin to do it under your juvie. Oh, begin to hide it. Hide it, hide it. Don't let people see. How many of you know that um, Saul, Saul, King Saul in Israel would have ruled forever? His generation would have ruled on that throne forever. But because of this attitude of unconfessed sin, it was more bothered with what people say than what God will say. He was more bothered. And that was why instead of him to repent, when he was confronted with the sin, he started telling somewhere, oh, just cover me up, cover me up. Don't let the people see. Don't let me. And that's exactly the life many of us are living today. We are more concerned about what people will say or whatever they are saying than what God himself is saying. You should be more concerned about what God is saying. Yes, we know. Yes, sometimes people say things here and there and that, that stuff. But you should be more concerned in the hierarchy of concern. What God is saying is what should be more, much more paramount to you than what people are saying. Ah, why would people say it? Oh, ah, how will they happen? Ah, da, 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 da. And because of that, we continue to, we continue to, we continue to fall from one sin into another deluge of sin. That was what David did. He was more conscious about what people would say. That was why, after sleeping with the wife of Uriah, he started pl planning strategies on how to eliminate the man, his servant that has a very beautiful heart. Praise the Lord. And that's exactly what happens when we begin to keep a night sin. The two begin to multiply in our bosom. We begin to see more sin to hide the one you are having. It's a terrible thing. It's not a good experience. And it will not bring into your life a quality salvation experience that ought to be. You need to unburden yourself of every iniquity and sin and begin to live a righteous life. The Bible says, Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor see that the seed of his comfort, but whose delight is in God. And on the law of his God he meditates day and night. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of our time finally, beloved, how many of you know that for every sin we sin, we are under God's own CCTV camera. Nothing is hidden in his presence. Nothing can ever hide before him because he's an all-knowing God. He sees everything day in, day out. Those ones you did in secret, the one you are doing openly, everything God sees them. And that's the more reason why you must not toy with sin. It's a terrible thing. Praise the Lord. You can't hide from him. 
No matter how much you try, Adam could not. Praise the Lord. Now, one last thing I want you to take home again tonight is that when we confess our sin and we do not allow that sin to be part and parcel of our life again, one instant blessings we receive is that all the record of our sins are blotted out. Is there in your Bible? Let's open our Bible to Acts 3 verse 19. Acts 3 19. Go and read it. Acts 3 19. He said, Repent therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out. What are we talking about? There will be a distinction between what you are in the world and what you are now in Christ Jesus. If there is no distinction, then forget about it. You don't have a, you don't have you don't have a new life, neither do you have a salvation. There must be a distinction in the way you have been doing things and now you are doing it now. And that's what the what the Bible means when it says when a man is in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed away, all things have become new. So what happens is that confession releases the record of sin if we return not again to that same sin. Confession erases record of our sins if we return not again to that same sin. Praise the Lord. Paul never returned to become a persecutor of the church. Rather, he died for the church. Praise the Lord. Many of us do not know that when we are totally surrendered to Christ, when we are surrendered to him, he has delivered us by dying for us on the cross. And as soon as you go back to take your life back and you start sinning those sins, he has forgiven you, indirectly you are nailing Christ back to the cross. May we not in a, with our own hands nail our maker back to the cross in the mighty name of Jesus. So beloved, on a final note, Confession erases record of sins. Acts 3.19 He says, repent therefore and be converted. When you, when you repent, it's not just to say you repent today, tomorrow you are repenting the same repentance. You are repenting next tomorrow, the same sin. You are repenting tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. You keep on doing the same thing and claim you are repenting. In that situation, the person's sin is just piling up, piling up, piling up. But as soon as you repent genuinely and you become converted, maybe from, for instance, somebody who used to be a thief, you become converted to becoming somebody who steals no more. What instantly happens is that all your record of sin in God's, in God's, in God's, data, in God's database will be erased instantly. The Bible says, I didn't say it. Acts 3.19, take your time, go and read and study that line of scripture. He said, repent therefore and be converted. That's where the problem is with many of us believers. We, we repent on daily basis. We repent like, um, like um, Judas Iscariot. Because it's, it's a regret, it's like looking like repentance. Many a times what we are really doing is not genuine repentance, but regretting what we have done. We regret and regret and go back to it again. Regret and regret and go back to it again. That's not what God wants. God wants us to confess those sins and be converted that all our sins may be blotted out. So that after they are even blotted out, we will now receive a time of refreshing that will come from God's presence. It's the scripture. Acts 3 verse 19. Take your time. Go and study that line of scripture. For us to have the, a clear divine understanding of what we are talking about. Repent therefore and be converted. That your sin may be blotted out. So that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. We love that you here tonight. And you don't even know Christ yet. Or yes, you once knew him. But today as we speak, if rapture should come down, you know you are not going anywhere. Don't toy with your salvation. The price of that salvation is greater than any other thing. Any other thing. Your salvation is greater than all the houses you have built. All the cars you have acquired. All the material things in this world that you are you you share you cherish so much. That your salvation is greater than everything.
Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. What shall it profit a man if he gains your word and loses his soul? That your soul is the most priceful. Don't lose it. Don't allow anything to drive you to lose it. I pray God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Beloved, are you here and you want to surrender your life? Tonight, again, is another opportunity. Do it genuinely. And come and see what the Lord God will do. What the God of Elijah will manifest concerning your life. Amen. Remember that scripture, Acts 3.19. It says we should repent and be converted, converted, conversion. So that our sins may be blotted out. And so that the time of refreshing we are looking unto him for may come from the throne and presence of God. Bow your heads right now. Settle it quickly with your maker. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't postpone your day of redemption and salvation. The Lord God is here right now. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now. He is here to meet your needs and to set the captive free. Oh, Jesus is here right now. Talk to him and set to it with him now. Jesus is here right now. I say, my Lord Jesus is here right now. He is here to meet your needs. And to set the captive free. Oh, Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here right now. Set to it with him. To meet your knee. And to set the captive free. Oh, Jesus is here. Are you here now? You want justice to your salvation? Let me quickly lead you to Christ. There's a lot of benefits in what you're about to do. Don't allow anything to hold you back. That Ethiopia Enoch knew the importance of salvation. He was a big man. He had everything eyes could desire wish. He has everything heart could desire. He beckoned on Stephen, please come, come, come. Ah, please come and help me here. And as soon as the man heard the word of salvation, he saw a river and said, why not? Well, let, let me just baptize now. He didn't waste time as some people today do by procrastinating on their salvation. Beloved, tomorrow may be too late. Help your destiny now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Settle it with him now. I'm going to be praying this prayer with you if you are ready to do just that. And I pray the divine grace that sustained us, that helped us all, that same grace and mercy of God we manifest richly in your lives in Jesus' name. I will confess to him like this very quickly. Say, Father Lord, I thank you for this second chance. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be close to you again. Daddy, I come tonight. Please, Lord, I confess all my sins, all my sins of unrighteousness. Have mercy upon me. Save me tonight. Take me back to your side. Wash me and make me whole. And recover my life to glory again. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you have prayed that prayer, I want your faith to be agreed with mine as I pray in this direction with you. My Father, my God, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. We say, blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Daddy, I lift up this one before you, your children that have come to you, Lord. O Lord our God, as you showed mercy unto the prodigal, arise, take this one's back, and sanctify and wash them, that they may partake of your blessings and your heavenly glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Many of them after now, Lord, will begin to confess their sins. O oh Lord our God, come and guide them to do it rightly. Daddy, their destinies will not be injured. Their destinies will not be destroyed. By the power of your divine revival, you shall transform these ones. And your name alone shall be glorified. On the day of reckoning, when you be saving them, Lord, let me and my household not also not be a castaway. In Jesus' mighty name, we have all prayed. And amen. Our God is good all the time. I want you quickly right now, 
Let's sing this our song as we pray our revival prayers and our strategic prayers. This section is very important. Please don't play with it. Our God is good. Amen. God of wonders. God of wonders. Come and do your wonders in my life. God of wonders. God of wonders. Come and do what only you can do. Hallelujah. God of wonders. Oh yes. God of wonders. Oh yes. Come and do your wonders in my life. Hallelujah. God of Oh yes. God of wonders. Oh yes. Come and do what only you Amen. You are going to pray the following prayers for yourself very quickly. Say, Oh Lord, my Father, help me to confess and forsake my sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, help me to confess and forsake my sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, arise. Help your children to confess and forsake their sins in the name of Jesus. Help them to confess and forsake their sins. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, Holy Spirit of God, assist me to overcome all inherited besetting sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, assist me to overcome all inherited besetting sins in the name of Jesus. Yes, assist me, Lord. Assist me, Lord. Assist your children, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Assist them to overcome all inherited besetting sins in the name of Jesus. Let them, oh yes, Lord, assist them to overcome all these inherited sins in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We have said it before again and we are saying it again. What sin does is to put your glory down. Your glory will not come down. Because the Bible promised us, He said, we should arise and shine. For the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon us. That your glory that is down or is not functioning to capacity. The Lord shall, by the power of resurrection, the Lord shall bring it up again tonight and revive it in the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to pray this prayer for yourself. Say, powers. Say, powers. Singing evil song and beating evil drum for me to dance. Be disappointed for, from tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Powers singing evil song and beating evil drum for my destiny to dance. Be disappointed from tonight. Be disappointed from tonight because my God has recovered me back. Be disappointed from tonight. Be disappointed from tonight. My God, my God has recovered me back. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every powers singing, O Lord, evil song. And beating evil drums for the life of your children. Let them be disappointed tonight. Let them be disappointed tonight. Because the God of recovery is operating in their life now. The God of divine recovery is operating in their life now. Let them be disappointed now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible says to, to be currently minded is death. To be spiritually minded this life and life more abundantly. You are going to pray this prayer for yourself. Please, I want you to pray for yourself. We have just, just but few more prayer points to go. Say every garment of death, spiritual or physical death, every garment of disgrace, garment of dis misbehavior concerning my life, catch fire from tonight. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. Every garment of death, spiritual or physical death, garment of disgrace, Garment of misbehavior in the area of my life. I say, catch fire tonight. Catch fire tonight. Catch fire tonight. In the mighty name of the Lord. I pray for your children again. Every garment of death. Every garment of disgrace. Garment of misbehavior. Oh, yes, Lord. Permeating, manifesting in any area of your life. Oh, yes. Let them catch fire. Let them catch fire. Let them catch fire. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for them also. By the power of you that saved Joshua the high priest. In the book of Zechariah. In the, in, the book, in, in the book of Zechariah, I declare, I declare right now, concerning your children, I say, put away filthy garments from their life and wear upon them the right garment now in the name of Jesus. Make them a brand that was plucked from fire. Let your mighty presence dwell with them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are still praying. Please pray for yourself. Say, every end of the year sacrifice assigned to kill me, to guard me, and to bury my glory, by fire 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Every end of the year sacrifice assigned to kill me, to guard me, to bury my glory. I command you tonight to backfire. I command you tonight to backfire. Every end of the year sacrifice. Oh yes, assigned to kill me, to guard me. Oh yes, or to bury my glory or any member of my family. I say backfire now. Backfire now. Backfire now. Backfire now. Backfire now. In Jesus' mighty name, they are backfired. Please, I want you to pray for yourself. Say, embassy is in tragedy. Embassy is in tragedy. My life and that of my family are not your candidate. We have bought you by fire by thunder. In the mighty name of Jesus. Embassy is in tragedy. My life and my family are not your candidate. Be aborted. 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 Be aborted by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every embassy is in tragedy. We have calamity. Trouble. Problem. My life and my family are not your candidate. Be aborted. In Jesus. My them they are aborted. Please, I want you to pray for yourself. Our Lord is good. Our Lord is kind. Amen. You are going to pray. Say, O oh Lord, by your mercy tonight, recover me back to my divine glory and fire and power. In the mighty name of the Lord, by your mercy tonight, recover me back to my divine glory and power. Recover me back. 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 Recover me back to my divine glory and power. In the name of Jesus, by your divine mercy, recover me back, recover me back, recover me back. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, Father Lord, by the reason of your divine mercy, let everything sin has destroyed in my life. Every good thing sin has destroyed concerning my destiny. Let them come alive again. Open your mouth and pray for yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, by the reason of your divine mercy, let everything sin has destroyed in my life. Sin has destroyed the life of your children. Let them come alive again by the power of resurrection. Let them come alive again in the name of Jesus. Every of their virtue, every of their glory, every of their blessings, every of their goodness that have been taken away, forcefully by the enemy, by the power of divine recover back, recovery back. Let them be recovered back tonight in the name of Jesus. Anything good the enemy has stolen from your life by taking advantage of our spiritual condition. Uh, let, the, oh, let the angel of war Go from corner to corner, places to places, and recover back your battery to you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them go to all nooks and crannies and recover back your battery for you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say every buying and selling that's ever taking place in the realm of the spirit that is against my interest. I neutralize, I nullify the transaction in the mighty name of Jesus. Every buying and selling that taking place in the realm of the spirit that is against my interest, I neutralize it. I, 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 I nullify the transaction tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Every buying and selling that have taken place in the realm of the spirit that is against your, children, your children's interest, I command them to be neutralized right now. I command the Almighty God, the Holy Ghost, to neutralize that transaction, to scatter that transaction. It will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever thing concerning your life, you are sold to them, knowingly or unknowingly, by the power of divine recovery, recover your portion back in the name of Jesus. If they are taking your birthright, right, it is time to get them back. Begin to confess it. Say, I recover back. I recover back. Every good thing the enemy has stolen from my life. Yes, with, with, with deceit, I recover them back. They belong to me, not the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray for yourself. Say, I recover back all my virtues. I recover back all my glory. I recover back my potentials. Yes, I recover back my birthright. I recover back my glory. I recover back my crown. I recover back my victory. I recover back my prosperity. I recover back my health. I recover back my, my family, my loved ones, my relations, my prosperity. I recover back my job. I recover back my ministry. I recover back my call. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Yes, you must recover virtually everything back that the enemy has stolen. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father Lord, we call upon your holy name tonight. Whatever good thing you have done in your people's life tonight, not allow the enemy to steal them again in the name of Jesus. Establish your children in marvelous light. Everything the enemy has stolen from their life, let them by the power of resurrection, let them by the power of divine recovery, recover everything back, even in greater measure now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we trust in you. 
Continue to keep this one and sustain them. Fight their battle for them. Every forces of evil trying to imprison these ones. Lord, arise, Lord, to scatter them asunder in the mighty name of Jesus. Show mercy upon your children right now. Let their glory shine again. Let there be, an, uh, uh, let, let, let there be a rising up. They will never fall. They will never fail. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have all prayed. Our God is good all the time. Amen. Uh, beloved, we thank God for your life. We appreciate you for being with us tonight. Of course, please make it a date again with us next Thursday in another enriching edition of Hour of Glory. I pray for you, you will never fall, neither will you fail. The light of God will shine all your way. Your light will never turn to darkness as the Lord liveth and the Spirit is alive. It is well with your spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. If you want to reach us, of course, our platform is always open. You can call, you can, you can reach us, you can ask us questions. If you are not clear of anything, ask us questions and surely we'll provide answers. And you can reach us on two platforms, Hour of Glory 21 at Yahoo.com. Hour of Glory 21 at Yahoo.com or Hour of Glory 21 at Gmail.com. Hour of Glory 21 at Gmail.com. We are working on our, on, 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 on our other social media platform. I will pray the good Lord will help us. We are still waiting on the leading of the Lord. Amen. I pray for us. It is well with your spirit, soul, and body. As the Lord liveth and the Spirit is alive, as you have seen the beginning of this year, you shall see the end. As we have seen the beginning of this year, we shall see the end in soundness and in health, in prosperity and in victory. So shall it be. Shalom. You are highly lifted and blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you all. See you again next Thursday. In Jesus' name, amen.